Welcome back to still TV3 New Day. Now, the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited has laid off 36 of its employees. We are told they were handed in their sack letters at the middle of uh, April and were asked that by middle May they submit every property of the company. Now, they were paid one month salary and that is it. Some of these employees have worked with the company for over 30 years and they are supposed to go home without any severance package. That is the focus of our discussion this morning. Have you been affected as well? Send us your views and comments this morning. We we'll read and share them with the rest of the world. I've been joined in studio by some of these ex-employees of the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited who were handed sack letters for no reason at all. Helena Vanderpoor is a research and monitoring officer at the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited, as well as Bess McRedu, who is the principal clerk at the estate department of the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited. Also joining us in the studio, just to know what the labor law says, is the Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Federation of Labor, Ken Kumsi. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start with you, Bismarck. How long have you worked for the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited? 25, over 25 years. Okay, so over 25 years. Yeah. And what is uh, the terms and condition? Are you a, a contract staff or you're a permanent staff? I'm a permanent staff. Okay. And uh, uh, so take us through what happened on that fateful day. Uh, that fateful day, uh, is it? I was in the house. And they called me as you come for my letter. Before then, before the, the pandemic, we said we should go home. After the pandemic, we come. So we were there, and they said we should come. So I went. That was Thursday. So when I went, I collected the letter. Mm -hmm. When I looked through the letter, it's termination of appointment. So they are giving me one month salary mm -hmm. to leave. But that very day, I was shocked. Why? And I was so surprised because somebody who have worked for 25 and over years, and they are giving you one month salary to go home. What are you going to do with one month salary? Meanwhile, I have kids. <coughs> I have family I'm catering, I'm catering for. External family too. I have that some day. Mm -hmm. So all these things create a problem for me. And I was so surprised. I don't know what to do at that, that day. Mm -hmm. But what do you do? They give you the letter. You need to go home. What was the and explanation? The, when you look through the letter, mm -hmm. the, only, the letter states that it, it's not the on the uh, redevelopment and all this. They say you should go home. Helena, you were also affected uh, yes. by this uh, exercise. Yes. How, how did it come to you? It came as a shock and a surprise. Because after all uh, uh, these years that I've worked with the company, even in trying what times, uh, uh, years back that we've not been paid, we've been with the company, we've been behind the company, and now they just gave us letter just to go lay us off, which I think is not fair. The management has not been fair to us. Mm -hmm. They are heartless because that's not the way they have to treat us. So you have worked with the company for how long? How many Eight, years? 18 years. 18 good years. Yes, please. And you are given just a month's salary a to month go home. Yes, to go home. No severance package no, whatsoever. No, nothing. Ken Kumsen is the Deputy General Secretary mm -hmm. of the Ghana Federation of Labor. What does the law say? Well, I think that it's quite pathetic that today we would have to discuss the lockdown, shutdown, or redundancy of trade fair. Kwame Nkrumah had a fantastic idea of making the trade fair uh, a hub, primary hub for... Uh, African trade. Uh, today we should be celebrating trade fair, providing jobs in thousands, and not to talk about the dismissal and termination. Now quickly, if you look at the, the constitution of Ghana, uh, we are governed by law, and it's important that our conduct uh, uh, fall within the ambit of the law. The Article 191 of the Ghana constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, provides that you cannot terminate a public officer uh, or dismiss without a just cause, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just cause means that you have to assign a reason for your conduct and action. It appears to me that the uh, management of trade fair uh, appears to be relying on the doctrine of um, the common law doctrine, which uh, in, the, in those days were servant and master relationship 
you could at will terminate, dismiss without providing reasons. Those are primitive times. Those mm -hmm. are old times. We cannot in 21st century going forward to appear to be relying on a common law disposition on the relationship between an employer and employee. If you look at this Article 11 of the Constitution, there are hierarchy or ranks mm -hmm. in our legislation. Mm -hmm. The first on top is the Constitution. Second is the, the Act of Parliament. Third is the regulation. Fourth uh, is the existing laws. And fifth gives you the common law. Mm -hmm. Now, giving a reason to be or giving the notice to represent a reason for which you want to discharge yourself of obligation is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Now, the ILO Convention 158 uh, stipulates that you cannot terminate the appointment of an employee without assigning a valid reason. And the reasons are either the person has misconducted himself, the person uh, has proven to be um, incompetent, mm -hmm. or some restructuring that is going on. If you look at the Section 8 of the Labor Act, it actually gives the employer the right to terminate. Mm -hmm. But in terminating, you have to rely on Section 15, which is the grounds. Okay. Now the, the grounds, grounds for termination. The grounds for termination. Mm -hmm. And the first on the, the, that um, grounds is that the, the parties must agree mm -hmm. that on this occasion, we want to sever or we want to discharge our obligations or go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the employees, there is a collective agreement. Okay. But prior to the collective agreement, there was an appointment letter, and there was a provision in the appointment letter that stipulated that the parties could discharge themselves with, with one month's notice. Unfortunately for management, the signing of the collective agreement mm -hmm. gloriously replaced that provision in the, the appointment letters. Right. So it is unfair for management to appear to be relying on the provision of the appointment letter when there is a collective agreement clearly make provisions yeah, I, for what I have done. the collective agreement here. Now, Article 47 of the collective agreement says redundancy and severance pay, which is compensation. And A says when an employee service is terminated as a result of a closed down amalgamation or rearrangement uh, causing employees uh, employee to suffer any diminishing in his terms and conditions of employment, he shall be paid compensation in addition to other entitlements. Exactly. So why are we not looking at this part of the article? Exactly. So that is the provision that stipulates that clearly that once there is an activity, because you see there's a redevelopment, there's an activity at trade fair, which is resulting in employees losing, diminution means that lost in income, okay. working condition, term in your working condition that occasions the provision of compensation. Right. Clearly, what we see today is that the workers are entitled to redundancy payment because what is currently happening is not that there's been uh, misconduct, proving misconduct, there's not theft incident, employees have not done anything. 25 down the line, years down the line, when they have spent their time, work with you from the days and 18 years, 15 years, several years people have worked with you. You mm -hmm. cannot just get up one day and to say that, to go home. walk home. That is a common law position and that, can, that cannot be upheld as far as our regulations are concerned. Mm -hmm. So what has to be done is that the law provides in section 63, uh, three of the Labor Act that the employer, though you have the right to terminate, that termination uh, has to be fair Mm -hmm. or a fair reason must be proved. You must prove that the termination is fair. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will be deemed to be unfair. Mm -hmm. Now, the question you want to ask is that what is the remedy mm -hmm. for unfair uh, mm. termination? Yeah. What, what, so, what, so let's come to that. What is the remedy for unfair termination? I mean, you consider, uh, Bismarck, you consider your termination unfair. I think I, I, I tried engaging, I must put on record that I've tried engaging the Public Sector Workers Union on this very particular matter, I'm told that they're engaging the ministries, departments, and agencies on this very particular issue. But I'm also aware that there have been series of meetings that were supposed to have been held with the CEO of the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited. That did not happen. And, and that's just what inform the information we have. But Bismarck, you consider this as an unfair treatment? Yes. Why? You see, it's, it's an unfair to be. Because, you see, if, if you are working with somebody, mm -hmm. and even let me sell you a, 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 a fowl. If you want to kill a fowl, mm -hmm. right, you are going to give him food mm -hmm. and then uh, water before you kill the fowl. Mm -hmm. So if you want to suck me, 
The best thing for you to do is you call me, ask the collective As the law says, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. you, you will tell me, even you psych me in a certain way because at that time when you are going home, Okay. Yeah, so, did, so you were not psyched, you were home. No, you're, Maybe the company is not doing well. I mean, every company is, is suffering right now, Helena. You, 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 so you would want to agree that maybe the trade fair company is not doing so well. Uh, no, I, I, I would not agree to what you are saying. The company is doing well. How no. do you know? Uh, the company is doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say is that we were told to go home. Mm -hmm. We were working normal and they are paying us normal. Okay. They told us to go home under this COVID-19 crisis. Okay. Yes. So we all uh, have it in mind that it's because of COVID-19 and this social gathering, all this, uh, all this issue. And so we were uh, told that well, we should come to the office and pick our letters. Hmm. And behold, when we opened our letters, we were told that well, our appointment has been terminated hmm. and no reason whatsoever has been given. Mm -hmm. You know, there hasn't been the uh, management should have engaged us mm -hmm. or discussed with us mm -hmm. and give us what reasons mm -hmm. to why our uh, appointments are being terminated. Mm -hmm. And nothing of that sort was done. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. consultation with even the, the union. Uh, we the have union, the local we, union. We, we have the union, no mm -hmm. consultation whatsoever. Okay. Yes. So we think uh, they've been unfair to us. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kumsing, now I I'm reading. Uh, clause B of the article 47 of the collective agreement says, in the event of any redundancy, the company shall inform the union the names, grades, and dates of employment of those whose appointment it wishes to terminate, not less than three months to the date of, uh, on which the appointment will be terminated. And C says, employees who shall be affected shall be informed of termination of their appointment not less than two months prior to the date of termination. So clearly, there is a breach of uh, of uh, of the agreement here yes. with the employees. <laughs> yes. So so so, what does the law, you know, say? With, so with quickly, respect to that? Uh, I'll take it from where Helena uh, terminated. It is immaterial whether or not the company is in existence or shut down or closed down. Mm -hmm. Sixty-five provide that when the company is shut down, mm -hmm. closed down, locked down, amalgamation, merger, what have you. The business is under obligation to pay redundancy payment, especially when such shutdown, lockdown, would result in the workers losing their a term in their conditions of service or losing their job. So there are two things that you have to understand here. There is that lockdown or shutdown that results in a loss of term in your mm -hmm. conditions of service. Mm -hmm. And the term could be salary. It could okay. be maternity leave. It could be... Uh, overtime okay. or what have you. Mm -hmm. Then there is that shutdown, lockdown, or amalgamation, merger, whatever you call it or describe it, mm -hmm. that will result in the severance or the, 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 yeah, the severance or termination of the employee. Right. When these matters arise, Section 65 provides that the employee is entitled to be paid redundancy payment. And that was exactly that was reproduced in the collective in the agreement. The collective agreement, yes. Blatantly speaking, the, empl the employer has disrespected it, not honored it. And we think that it is uh, unfair, one, two, it's also alien to sound industrial relations practice across the world. Okay. So what we are saying is that uh, given what is happening now, they are entitled to be paid redundancy payment. There is a remedy under the law. Now that there's a union there, we expect the union to quickly meet with the employer, mm -hmm. uh, have a conversation as to what the issues are, and then try to resolve the matter at that stage. Mm -hmm. If at the stage it doesn't work, they must petition the Labour Commission to draw the attention of the Commission that there's a violation of the right of the employees or the contract or the condition of service that exists between the two parties has been violated mm -hmm. for which they seek the Commission to intervene. Mm -hmm. So yes, the intervention of the Commission, if the Commission studies or interrogate or investigate the matter and is satisfied that indeed there is uh, a case, three remedies, uh, mm -hmm. three strands, three okay. remedies. First of all, they can either reinstate, re-engage the employees. Uh, there's a second strand, and the third strand is pay compensation. Okay. And here, the compensation is redundancy payment. Redundancy payment. Payment. Okay. So we think that the employees deserve uh, to be uh, um, treated fairly. Mm -hmm. It's quite unfortunate that uh, a, a company that is under the Ministry of Trade, uh, if you like, it could be a corporation or agency, but mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a public sector, if you like. Uh, however you want to describe it. So, but it's unfortunate at this time you have to lay people off without setting the right example. Mm. This becomes 
an outlet for private sector uh, employers mm -hmm. to probably follow suit. Mm. We think it's unfair, we think it's unhealthy, and this must not be countenanced in any in any conversation anywhere. Well, well, I spoke to the Public Sector Workers Union. I really was hoping that they would speak to us. They declined speaking to us, by the way, just to put on record. And they said that they are engaging the Ministry of Trade and Industry to look at what is, you know, what they can do for these uh, victims of, of this exercise. But I want to know, have you heard of any such uh, meetings with your union, maybe your local union? Have, have they, you know, told you about any such meetings with the, with the Ministry of Trade? Yes, I heard about it. Okay. Uh, we've contacted the, uh, the TUC, mm -hmm. and then they said that they are going to contact the other agencies. Uh, last Thursday, we, we met with the chief labor officer. Okay. Because the, the Minister for Employment have referred the case to the chief labor officer okay. to negotiate it. But when we went, the management did not, did not come. The management did not attend. Management so, led by the CEO yes, of the Trade Fair Company Limited, yes, Dr. Agnes. They did not attend. Okay. So they rescheduled the meeting to Thursday, uh, Wednesday, coming Wednesday. This Wednesday? Right. Okay. So you've had, uh, you've had to cancel the meeting twice? Right. And she didn't turn up? Okay. So, uh, and is, uh, so what do you think, Helena, is the position of the company, management of the uh, Ghana Trade Fair Company mm -hmm. Limited right now? Yes. Regards what's happening to you? The position now, we are being laid off. In the, in the house. So the posture, I mean. So, I mean, what do you see is the posture of the company? Oh. Do you think they are ready to, uh, to, you know, have some agreement with you? Are they ready to listen to you at all? I think we wrote them, uh, uh, wrote a letter to management. Mm -hmm. that we, the first step that we took was, we wrote a letter to management to give, uh, have a meeting with us. Mm -hmm. So that give uh, reasons to us to uh, our termination of appointment mm -hmm. but we haven't had any there has not been any response from management okay and when, we when was this letter well, when did you write this letter to management uh, i it's, think last month or so immediately week, after you are giving the letter yes because you're giving the letter middle of april 23rd 23rd yes. april, april yeah, yeah. and you were told to submit every property of the company by mid of, of mid may. May. may and have you done that already we've right. done it Okay, and you wrote a letter uh, about a month ago to the company trying to... Yes, yeah, so that know, there will be a negotiation or discussion as okay. to why we are being laid off. And we, it hasn't happened yet. No. We, we haven't them, replied your letter no, as well. Please. We want them to explain why, why? which is fair. Yes. Now, uh, Ken Kumsing, just wrapping up, you said the remedies are three. Reinstate them, pay redundancy <clears throat> package... Or re-engagement. Or re-engagement. Yes. Okay, so then, so what should they do now? Good. I so mean, the letters that you wrote, uh, I believe it's from the, 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 the trade union, isn't it? Right. Yes. Okay, so once there's a union there, what that has to be done is that the union uh, has to follow up on management. Uh, Labor department that has also been uh, involved must, um, I know that they would want to write back to management because once you dishonor a first, second meeting, uh, third meeting would mean that you are unwilling and that may have to go to Labor Commission. Once it goes to Labor Commission, they will now go through facilitation, mediation, arbitration, mm -hmm. and an award will be given uh, if Labor Commission satisfy that there is a case uh, that has to be resolved. Mm -hmm. So there is remedy under the law. I believe, honestly, that uh, we could go through that process to ensure that their rights are protected and that at the end of the day, they are not shortchanged. Mm. Well, we're also hopeful that, I mean, this will be resolved amicably. And, I mean, you said that the remedies are, they could either be reinstated or giving their you know redundancy package we are extending this discussion on business focus tonight it's only fair that we give management of the ghana trade fair company limited an opportunity to explain to us exactly why they had to sack 36 of their employees some of whom have worked with the company for more than 30 years without
any severance package whatsoever. And so want to make a date with us at 6 p.m. tonight with Alfred Okansi Business Focus as we discuss this a bit further. I have been speaking with the Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Federation of Labor, Ken Kumsing. I've also been speaking with Helena Van Der Poel, who is uh, with the Research and Monitoring, or who was with the Research and Monitoring uh, Department uh, of the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited, as well as Bismarck Redu, who is the principal clerk uh, at the Estate Department of the Ghana Trade Fair Company Limited. Thank you, uh, lady and gentlemen, for passing through this morning. I'm really hoping that this is resolved, you know, amicably. We'll